Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Cinema Scumbag Movie Podcast, first of 2021. My name's Seth. My name is Nick. And it's been one week since you looked at me. <laughs> Stop listening to the Cinema Scumbag Podcast. <laughs> it's been, let's see, October 22nd is when the last episode went live, and we are recording this new one on January second so it's wow. been a while yeah it's i think this might have been our biggest gap altogether usually when we don't do stuff in the videos and we'll keep the podcast going but we just kind of we just kind of let it go for a while um no real reason just i don't know lack of motivation maybe you know it's funny i think we said this exact same thing on the last episode <laughs> we, we recorded and we're like we're gonna get back into it and... <laughs> well hey i'm i'm not here to say i'm not here to promise that Hey, we're we're back. We're gonna at least try to keep the podcast steady. But I, I've got some ideas for some videos. And no, that's we are back. This is it. The podcast, podcast is, is back. The yes. podcast is back and running. Okay, it's been a long time. We <laughs> they don't get... trust us anymore. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've probably abandoned all five of you that listen. Um, I know a couple new guys have hit us up over the past couple months saying, "Hey, I got into it. Where you? Where have you guys been?" Oh, thank you for sticking with us. If you're still listening, if you're tuning into this. We appreciate it. 2021, we're going to get back on schedule for real this time. Mm-hmm. Every couple of weeks, new episodes. And that's how it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Oh, I got a I got a Keurig for Christmas. Did you? Gifted by the lovely T. It's been, that's, a, that's a good gift. It's a good strategy is. on her part, too, because she can use it as well. Yeah, and it makes sense because now she gets free coffee from dutch for working there so it's just like coffee 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 shit all the time but yeah that's that's a good gift it's been a yeah it's been a great gift i'm sucking what do you normally make a like a pot of coffee on the weekend or what do you do yeah i mean we we had a coffee mate or whatever the the regular pots are yeah um but i still had never (laughs) figured out quite how to to measure it all up so we would just waste a shit ton of it so now this just gives you like one cup and you're good and if you want another cup sure you, you can't beat that i love my keurig um get my cake cups on amazon though Let's just get, you get them pretty cheap what kind do you use honestly whatever's on sale like yeah. whatever the best value for the dollar really yeah i, I got like, the other day i bought it was like 40 cake cups for 13.99 or something oh wow that's really good yeah yeah, I got some Green Mountain ones the other day, and those are pretty good. Those are good. There's a lot of variety out there. There really is. I I just noticed that. Did I you was just a, get the? Sorry, did you just get the like a basic Keurig model? Or did you get the one with the screen? Or I think it's just the basic one. Um, it's all you need. Yeah, but it's been nice. It was a really coffee filled uh, Christmas. Oh. I got that. I got a um, like a a rotating mug holder from her mom. And, Ooh. Yeah, it was it was really lovely. It's really your lovely. your barista. I am. Yeah, I just put the cake up in and press play, and I'm good. I'm Gucci. That's all it takes. It's it's a great great invention. Um, how was how was the holidays? It was pretty good. Yeah, it was a good Christmas. Really really chill. Went to That's Tucson. Good. Hung out. Must with be family. nice. Yeah. Well, I, I, the real question is, how was yours? Well, my it's life. It's a has different changed. Christmas in the Yarrington house this year. <laughs> <laughs> My life has changed dramatically. Um, yeah, kind of didn't do much. But, you know, being the introverted guy that I am, I wasn't too upset about it. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Did you uh, order a pizza? <laughs> Sausage and mushroom. <laughs> From Little Nero's? You have to pay for your pizza, sir. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Let's see, well, I ordered... <laughs> Want to know what I ate over the holiday season? Oh, yeah, of course. Extra large sausage and mushroom pizza, garlic okay. knots, okay. KFC $20 family meal, oh, bucket my... of chicken. <laughs> is that in one night? No, this is not in one night. <laughs> bucket of chicken, two large mashed, mashed taters, <laughs> coleslaw... Four biscuits. Um, no, and that was not one night. But let's see what else I had a burrito. 
this is getting way too depressing. So we're gonna go move ahead. On. I'll, I'll recap mine as well. No, that's that's really about it. It's just a bunch of takeout, a lot of beer too. Oh yeah, yeah. I've had obviously a lot of coffee. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot of sparkling juice as well. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, but yeah, after after the holidays, I, I I also got some fast food shit. They built a new water burger right down the street. Oh fuck! Had to check that out. Got a patty melt. It was delightful. <clears throat> and then the other day, I went to Popeyes. Got some chicken, boneless. <laughs> oh, you got chicken nuggets. Chicken tenders. Chicken tendies. Chicken tendies. Okay. Okay. So it's been an unhealthy break. <laughs> Got to get back to the gym once. Uh, once go back to work. I'm fasting today. I'm not. I'm just drinking black coffee until six p.m. so I can order super nachos. <laughs> From where? <laughs> One of the local Hispanic joints here in Phoenix. Filbertos. Oh, they're great. I. Uh, yeah, I need to get back into some sort of routine. I just feel so off being off for like a week and a half. I feel like today's Sunday. It's really weird. It's yeah. pressing me. Fucks you up, man. Well, this whole year has been pretty fucked up. Um, we'll talk about a few news thingies. But uh, yeah, this episode we're going to recap the year just in a different way. Um, I know for myself it's probably the same for you. I didn't really get to check out a whole lot of... 2020 films yeah i mean i think currently right now i've seen nine maybe maybe (sighs) ten i may have seen ten and not summer documentaries it's just kind of a mishmash of stuff that doesn't deserve its own top ten of course there's been a whole lot of issues you know things haven't things that were supposed to come out haven't come out and a lot of things have gone streaming you know so yeah, really interesting way that um, studios are changing things up, especially Warner Brothers and HBO Max. That was a big deal. It's a game changer, man. Yeah, they're if I'm correct, they're just going to be releasing all their blockbuster, well, not even all blockbuster, just a lot of their um, catalog for 2021 on their app, HBO Go, or you know Max. What the best, you know what the best part about that is? No theater. I can watch Space Jam, A New Legacy, in the comfort of my own home. Oh, my God. Yeah, you might want to do that. Man, that's going to be great. to see a grown man crying in the theater. <laughs> I wouldn't cry. <laughs> I wouldn't cry. <laughs> but it's going to be great. Uh, they're gonna <laughs> when, they bring out, when they bring out Kobe's corpse <laughs> as a tribute, you just see this guy sobbing in his seat. <laughs> Oh. I was a Lakers fan my whole life. Oh, my God. Uh, Where's the Knicks cameos? Oh, not a whole lot going on there. <laughs> I actually went to the theater, though, on Christmas. It's the first time I'd been in, I don't know. How was that? Um, There was a lot of people in there. I mean, as much as, you know, they do the, like, half capacity or whatever. But, I mean, you know, it was fine. There's just not a whole lot to see. And, you know... Movies have always been a Christmas tradition. Like, people love going to the movie theater. It's like one yeah. of the busiest days, you know? Family all together, want something to do. Yeah, but there's just, I mean, there was nothing much to see. I went to see that Tom Hanks film, uh, News of the World. It's pretty good. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. but it's just like, fucking, uh, you know, you, you could probably watch that streaming somewhere. There's really no point in going to even see it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've always been, like, a lover of going to the theater, but... Uh, I don't know. Things are changing. Things are really, really odd. And I think as much as this past year was kind of a tent pole of what's to come, I think next year will be even bigger as far as right. that goes. Right. And I'm with so, you. I, I like the theater, but it's, you know, the theater's at the best when it's nobody in there but you, you know? Yeah. And I, I prefer, like, I wish they still had the, the, um, I, I forget what they call it now, but they had the indie theater up at Fashion Square before they connected it into the mall, and that was just that was good. It was like a, a really close knit, smaller. Shit. I didn't even know there was one over there. Yeah, there's like a five star restaurant in its spot now, but huh. yeah, it was that was a really good time. It was a lot of older people who were respectable of the rules and <laughs> see that's fine that's there's nothing wrong with that you know when i used to work third shift that was i loved going to the movies then because i would go at like 9 a.m you know the early bird showing yeah like i would get off work go have a cup of coffee and then i'd go watch a movie with a bunch of old people and there was <laughs> yeah, no was you know there, like if you go to the movie on tuesday at 
9 a.m. You're not going to get any dickheads in there. No. But, I mean, it is it is cool. I I booted up T's Disney Plus the other day and watched Soul. And oh, it was yeah. just so, so simple, so easy. Brand and, new movie that uh, you can just throw on and, and watch in the comfort of your own home. And you could have popped a 75-cent bag of popcorn if you wanted some. Yeah. It would have been a real cheap experience. Yeah. So, I... Could have watched a better I, movie, though. It was pretty good. Really <laughs> I've, act, I've actually heard great things about it. <laughs> yeah, let me pop on Wonder Woman 84. Oh. <laughs> I've heard not great things about She's that. fucking hot, though. Yeah, she is. Hmm. Well, I do have a few news things here. Um, some of them are not really timely, but... Some of them are, are cool and interesting, and I want to talk about them. We're sad to uh, announce that Black Panther has passed away. <laughs> We're sad to announce that um, Eddie Van Halen has passed away <laughs> five months uh, ago. Shit. Oh, that that's another thing. We do. You, should we make bets this year? Oh, the old death pool. Yeah, the old de- the old Deadpool. <laughs> De- Chimichanga. <laughs> <laughs> he he burnt, looked like a a squotum. Fucking <laughs> dumb. I forgot about. I I was watching like the TCM in remembrance, and I just I forgot about some people. Yeah, there's I mean, actually I, been quite a few deaths that I probably forgot a lot of them too. Well, I put I put on the list here back when they happened. Rip, Rip Connery and Rip Trebek. Fuck forgot about them well not yeah. alex but i forgot about uh connery who else has died this year uh i'd have to i'd have to look because i forgot again <laughs> celebrity deaths of 2020 yeah we should have uh we should have done a yeah find out about that but we can make some some bets real quick um i, I know you've said chevy chase the past i don't know how many years well, I don't you know, know something though like i watched him in that christmas vacation ad for Fuck, what was it? I don't know. It's like a car company or something. Yeah. Did you see that? I didn't actually see the commercial. I didn't know where to find it. He's uh, yeah, he's looking a little better than he has. Well, he has to. Or else he's I mean, gonna croak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know for sure. Maybe it's it was just good makeup or something. But I'm gonna. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm not going with Chevy this year. Okay. Who are you I don't thinking? Know. <laughs> I don't James know. Earl. You know, after seeing that coming to America trailer, <laughs> when he was on his deathbed. Mm. Yeah. He's looking oh, a little I don't rough. know. He's an old man. He's but, looking a little rough. Uh, you know. Oh, shit. I always keep forgetting about Kirk Douglas. He was one of them. Ah, old Kirk. Old, old Kurt. Hmm. Kurt. Kurt Cobain. <laughs> I mean, who's going to die this year? You pick. Hmm. Well, let's see. Dick Van Dyke? No. I keep saying him every year, too, and he keeps cheating the old death. He's on Cameo. Is he? Holy yeah, shit. What, like 500 ex- bucks? Oh, I think it's more than that. I was looking at the, <laughs> I was looking at the other day. It's funny, like, going through there and just seeing what, like, fucking act. Like, anyone you could think of is on there. I know, and... <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. That'd be cool to have. Until How much he- do you think it costs for Dick Van Dyke to... Wish you happy birthday. You. Yeah. Um, well, I would have guessed five hundred, but you said more. Probably seven fifty. One thousand dollars. Fuck me, dude! It was like, it was like a hundred to get a picture with him when he came here. I mean, that, that seems like a bargain. A hundred compared to this? Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's personalized, but still, that's that's ridiculous. It's just I don't know. Look, fuck. The other day, I I, just, I ended up on that website for some reason. I was just clicking through it. It's just like holy fuck. It's just so many random people. Oh, there's like there's big celebs, and then there's the smallest of the small. Yeah. Like oh, the Santa Claus from Home Alone. <laughs> still milking it all this oh, time my later. God. <laughs> Max. Oh, I forgot about Max. Max von Sydow. Oh. James Lipton, your favorite celebrity. Oh. Little Richard. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Happy we. Happy we. <laughs> he, he croaked. Rest in peace. Oh, Irfan Khan. Oh, yeah. A yeah. big one. Yeah, there's Jerry, a... Jerry Stiller. There's a... There's a, a lot. Um... 
Yeah, I don't know. Who who's going to croak? Uh, well, you have to think about accidents, okay? You know, your, okay. your Kobe's, your Antons. Um, Those are impossible to predict, though. <laughs> nobody would nobody would have put that's... Kobe Bryant on their t- death list. <laughs> well, that's why it's fun to try and pick it. Okay, so uh, you want to... <laughs> let's pick an accident, ca- <laughs> uh, a sudden death category. Yes. And, um, and I'll uh... go with... <laughs> Philadelphia Phillies entire team <laughs> on their way to the wild card game. <laughs> the first time, uh, US... first time in ten years that they make the playoffs and they all die in a plane crash. <laughs> the first major uh, United States sports team um, plane crash. Oh my god! Yeah, it would put me out of my misery too. <laughs> I wouldn't you have can, to stress in life anymore. You can finally move on. I don't know. It's hard telling though with that. I, I have no clue where to even start. But I'm thinking of like some old actors that um you know might be approaching the end. Fuck, I don't know. Hard I I'm going to say perhaps you know <laughs> I don't know. It's <laughs> I didn't really think about it beforehand, so um Tom Hanks. No. <laughs> Fuck. He is diabetic. Um, I'm looking at Blu-ray.com just because I have the Criterions up, and I see Game of Thrones, maybe like Charles Dance. Okay, okay. Who? <laughs> I know who that is. I'm going to go with Ian McKellen. Oh, See that's that's the thing about those guys like they always seem healthy but then that's the that's the obviously what they want to show off and then you realize oh he's been in a wheelchair for 7 years. Yeah, it's like you don't even fucking know. And Robert Duvall, that guy's still alive? Oh, oh wow. he's definitely dying. How did you come up with those ones? Did you just I looked up the 50 oldest actors. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 50 oldest actors still working and he's going to be 90 and Two days. Okay, let me let me let me look here real quick. June Squibb. Yeah, she would make sense. She like <laughs> it's weird. She like peaked in, as an old lady. Yeah, it's strange. I didn't know who she was until like a few years ago. Betty White's still alive. She is. Martha. No, that's oh, not the same Martha. oh, that's... Christopher Plummer. Oh no. I mean, you're probably right, but oh no. Edelweiss. Edelweiss. God, I went to back to cameo. I'm on the LGBTQ category. Oh yeah, who who's on there? <laughs> Use your imagination. I'm gonna guess. Uh, <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna guess uh, Angela Lansbury. Okay. She's 95. Okay. I didn't know she was that old. She was in the Manchurian Candidate in 1962 as a Fuck. mom. She Fuck. was a mom in that. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess her. Tales I'm also of gonna. Time. <laughs> I'm also gonna guess uh, James Cromwell. Oh shit! Not James. Not Jimmy. I know. I know. Let me. Uh, what What's your James Cromwell film? Uh, I don't think of one. I think of Six Feet Under. Oh okay. Well, that makes <laughs> sense then. James Cromwell performance, I guess. Yeah, six feet. Under, I mean, Babe. Yeah, that's probably that's my go-to. <clears throat> hey, let us know who do you think is going to die this year. <laughs> Get back to our morbid dark humor. Well, you know, time is constant. You know, it's it's, it's so constant. Just, you know, I thought about watching that the other day, or even today. You ever feel like <laughs> <laughs> you ever feel like you don't remember the quote? <laughs> You know how people say, uh, seize seize the moment? I don't know. I'm kind of thinking that maybe it's the other way around. Spot on. I I don't know. Seize (laughs) the Yeah, it's spot on. I I don't know. I'm kind of thinking the moment (laughs) seize Ah, that's funny, man, because I've watched that fucking 20 times, and that's pretty much exactly how I should. uh, uh, (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, watch that. You can never go wrong. You know, Man. that's a good, like, reflect on your life sort of movie. What do you have to reflect on? <laughs> You're a young man. <laughs> I don't know. I don't Next know. up on uh, my prediction, Seth Yarrington. <laughs> accidental, no. accidental barbiturate overdose. 
<laughs> Seth Yarrington leaped off the chase building. <laughs> Yankees missed the World Series for a 10th straight or no. a 12, 11th straight year. Fuck. A young man jumped off the chase building and was <laughs> unrecognizable. I mean, yeah, it's like constant. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's always now oh, or something like that. Fuck. Sorry, guys. Maybe one day we'll go without quoting Boyhood. Hey, uh, question for the audience. <laughs> Do you guys like, you know, like, should we get kind of more dark like we used to be, or do you like it more family friendly? Yeah, yeah. Let us know. We Sometimes can. Sometimes I'm curious about that because I listen to like our old shit, and man, it was bad. Yeah, it was some really dark stuff. I don't remember any complaints, but no. I know we kind of tried to PC it just a little bit. Um, but yeah, let us know what uh, do you prefer? <laughs> do you prefer Mister Rogers or do you prefer dark? Do you prefer us being clean or? <laughs> Can I go back do to you... dropping fuck every other word. <laughs> do you prefer it like Gigi Allen dirty <laughs> or <laughs> bite it, you scum? <laughs> I want your God. <laughs> Better composition than anything Paul McCartney's ever done. Oh, suck a cock. <laughs> that is uh, the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'd rather listen to him say let it be a billion times than listen to Gigi Allen once. You wouldn't want to go to a Gigi Allen show and have him shit in front of you and then throw it at you? Hey, that's something you won't get at a Paul McCartney experience. Oh, <laughs> uh, shit. Ringo Starr throwing his feces around. Count me in. Oh, that's entertainment. All John right, so. Lennon. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs> oh, rip. <laughs> All right. Yeah, a couple news articles. I uh, just want to touch on them because they have, they have real implications on our interests in film. Uh, but the, the first one came up probably a month or two ago at this point. But uh, Johnny Depp, he was asked to leave the Fantastic oh, yeah. Beasts films. Which, by the way, is bullshit. Can we can we was say? Was he asked to leave based on his domestic issues? He lost a case. Um, it was a high pri- profile libel case against the Sun newspaper where they called him a wife beater. Uh, it wasn't about him actually being a wife beater. Okay. It was just that they called him one, and he considered it libel, and he lost. I'm with uh, I'm with Johnny on this. This just bullshit, you know. Well, and Amber Heard gets to keep working. Yeah, and she's fucking, you know, I don't know. I feel like if even, the roles were reversed. Yeah, even if it's a both sides sort of thing, why does she still get a, why does she still get a, a pass? You know, men can be domestically abused. But, yeah, have you seen his fucking finger? Yeah, I mean, it's that's a bunch of shit, you know? And honestly... Whatever, because those movies aren't that great, so... They're not, but uh, they actually already picked who's going to replace him, and it's going to be Mads Mikkelsen, which I kind of like. Yeah, I mean, I just... I don't know, man. It's but you're odd to me. <clears throat> you're right. Um, I mean, he wasn't... Obvious... He, wasn't a, he didn't fucking... I don't think he was found guilty of anything, right? No, he wasn't. That's that's the, that's the issue. So he now wasn't. you lose your job by guilt by you know association or guilt being guilty before you even go to court. Yeah, proven guilty before innocent. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's kind of the same case. What happened back with the Harry Potter films with Richard Harris and Michael Gambon? That was obviously they had to replace him because he died. But <laughs> you know. Like Richard Harris in those first and like that first Harry Potter movie, he was like, "That's how I always envisioned Dumbledore." You know, I I agree. I don't know how they ever thought they could make it through with him. No, though. because like if you go like when you get up to like um, <laughs> Order of the Phoenix and like Dumbledore's running around, he's fucking, active. Yeah, he's like fucking running around at the Ministry of Magic and shit. <laughs> and it's like, dude, there's no fucking way Richard Harris would have ever been able to do that. And Michael Gambon, he's not some some young mustang either no he, he managed but i mean richard harris was struggling when yeah when he was just walking down the halls when the, <laughs> the ch- when the chamber of secrets was opened that was not a wise casting decision you know with the scope in mind but man he was a fucking awesome dumbledore but i, I like the other guy too but that doesn't that one doesn't bother me so much i don't really think about oh it's a different guy no and this I mean, what is... can you do he fucking died you know yeah exactly there there's several characters in that franchise that change 
over yeah. time. Yeah. Like Professor Flitwick's a completely different looking guy after oh, a few movies. Oh shit. Um, but this, I don't know. It's it's already crumbling after the last movie, and this just doesn't help the case. I was confused with that last one. Like it's starting to get a little convoluted for me. It's it is convoluted, yeah. and the, the the timeline doesn't make sense because J.K. is just trying to. She doesn't have the source material, so she's just winging it. She's no. just saying shit. And I mean, if I was her, I'd do the same thing. You know, that's the money maker. Right. Why, why even bother doing something else? But you know, now she gets ripped apart nowadays. Anyways, you know. Right. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I obviously the Harry Potter franchise has it's past its um its glory yeah. days, and now they're just milking it at this point. I mean, she might as well just do another Harry Potter. <clears throat> you know. Yeah, I don't know how I'd feel about that. Maybe bring back the crew. Dude, that'll happen at some point. Bring them back as as oars or whatever it is that they ended up doing after after yeah, school. I definitely think that'll happen at some point. That's just the way things work, you know. Well, just just do it like a before trilogy sort of thing, where you you bring them back every like twenty years and you, you catch up on what's going. <laughs> I'd be on. cool with that honestly. The fucking end of that, like the last shot of that series, you know, at the end of part two. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that gets me. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Even though that that aging makeup is a little <laughs> shitty, but it's just weird seeing Harry <laughs> a, as a dad. Assault and separate like, hair. Albus Severus Potter. <laughs> you like, were named after two of the greatest headmasters <laughs> Hogwarts has ever seen. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> And one of them was a Slytherin. Oh, dude, the first time I watched that, oh that that fucked me up, man. Oh God. Yeah. Fucked first time up. I was like, this is this is literally the end of my childhood. Now I have to grow up and still be a child. <laughs> oh, the thing with those movies is I always I had like one and two. I read the books up until like the fourth one, and then I mm-hmm. kind of grew out of you know reading books like that. I just wasn't going to sit around reading, right? <laughs> and Who then does I, that? No, I mean I'd rather watch films, but I always watch like <clears throat> the first and the second one over and over again, and those are the only two that I've seen. So it was only till like a couple years ago where I got the set, and I'm like, fuck, I'm going to finally watch all these. And I just mm-hmm. like knocked him out, and it whew, fucked me up. Oh yeah. Well, I never read the last book, but yeah, I mean, it's it has its flaws. There's some silly shit going on, some continuity errors, blah blah blah. But it's as hard far to as like an eight that. film franchise, like right. they're all good at least. Yeah, except for part three. That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's fine. And I like uh, that Mads Mikkelsen guy. I want to see that. Um, that movie he's in this year with oh yeah another professor. round yeah yeah that seems cool yeah I see another one I wanted to check out that it's just not you can't I mean you can rent it but it's like oh can you s- seven bucks seven's not horrible considering like I mean you, you go to the theater you know yeah exactly yeah only thing with point. that though like um what is that if you go to Prime watch party create a watch party to watch yeah what and is chat that. With other- so could we like both watch that at the same time? That's pretty sick. Well, that's what know. it sounds like, unless we both have to have it. That's that's interesting. Yeah. But I don't know. The only thing with that is like I feel like as soon as I spent seven bucks to watch it, then it would like show up somewhere for free. Yeah, exactly. But you got to support the art form. Exactly. You can't pirate everything. You can pirate like big time stuff. Well, <laughs> that's not a endorsement, but oh you my can, you... god, they like illegal activity. <laughs> but it. The indie theaters have really suffered this year, so you got to support them. It's very true. Very true. Uh, speaking of casting, this one was pretty cool when we heard about it last month. Oscar Isaac to star as Solid Snake in Sony's Metal Gear Solid movie. Wow. Thoughts? Um, thoughts on the casting? I like the casting. I think that's I like good. Oscar Isaac a lot. I, I think he's a really good actor. I don't care about that Star Wars shit, but um, right. Inside that's... Lewis Davis... Oh, yeah. Ex Machina, uh, he's fucking Machina. great. Yeah, I, I really like him. Um, but the question becomes, can they make a good movie no. out of Metal Gear Solid? Not unless it's going to be five hours. Right. Like, it has to be long. Or parts. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Metal Gear Solid is a cinematic experience anyways. But right. I don't know how they can make that. I don't know how they can condense that down into even a two-hour movie, you know? I just have a feeling with all the lore to it, all the characters, they're going to convolute it and put in a bunch of 
characters yeah. and just really make it confusing, like or, a Spider-Man 2 sort of thing. Or they'll cut a lot out and try to make it basic, you know? Like, yeah, uh, I don't know, it'll be like, Spy infiltrates a base, and it's going to be real basic, you know? Revolver Ocelot. Yeah. But... I'll watch it. I mean that that shit's been in limbo for years. And those game those movies don't usually work out. You know, I know the Uncharted one's coming out, but Yeah. I mean, that's just well, gonna be like a knockoff Indiana Jones, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I just once again, cinematic video game already. Like what are you gonna do different? It, it's a cool it's a good casting though. I like that. Well, the guy who's directing it, Jordan Vogt Roberts, he's self-proclaimed massive fan of the series, so hopefully that means something. That's good news. That's good news. Yeah. Um, speaking of video game movies, did you know that they're they fucking there's like a Resident Evil reboot coming out? It's like already shot. Really? But it's yeah, it's like gonna go off the games. It's gonna be about that Ooh. mage and in Raccoon City, and it's it's like a reboot. Wow, with, that would be pretty cool with Claire and um, Leon and all that. Leon, but whew, the guy that's directing it, who is it? Johannes Roberts, the guy that did the Stranger sequels and oh. everything else shitty. His filmography <laughs> is atrocious. Well, yeah, I'll those watch you it, have. Though. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. That I, was my I'm, problem with the Resident Evil. Like, I like the first one, but I always it always bummed me out that it's, like, nothing like the games, you know? Yeah, like, different characters and everything. Well, they started to put in, like, the actual characters later on in the series, but I, I don't even want to watch no, those. The the first one's fine for what it is. Let's get a movie of Resident Evil 4. Ooh. Actually, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm still convinced that the new one, the new game, Village, is going to be connected in some way. You know, I um, I agree with you there. It looks too similar. It's very similar. The castle, the forest, the obviously the village, the the, the little villager characters. So I was trying to so, clear out my game so when something like that comes out, I can just buy it and play it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But well, Oscar Isaac, I like him as Snake. Uh, and then the last thing real quick, uh, one of the studio giants... MGM, they put themselves up for sale. Wow, really? I guess they're running out of money. Huh. As seems to happen. But they, uh, I mean, nowadays MGM is not the same studio it was before. No, I was just trying to think about that. They're big, I mean, the big players are James Bond and Rocky. And obviously those are two massive franchises that are still going to this day. But once you get beyond that, what's what else is there? Um, but they're trying to sell themselves for five billion dollars. <sighs> Shit. And there was talk of Apple and Netflix picking it up, which would add to the discussion. Dude, of that's streaming services taking and, over, man. Like, just imagine a James Bond movie coming out on Netflix. I, I'm telling you, that's just going to be the way it is. I really don't see, like, 20 years from now, I don't think movie theaters will be around. Well, I think, I think the pan for studios the pandemic was the greatest thing to happen because, yeah. uh, I mean, I've heard that even like a decade ago they were trying to take they were trying to cut out theaters yeah. altogether, so I it, it gives them all the profits they don't have to pay no they don't have to pay theaters any it's sort just, of cut and yeah I mean imagine that you know fucking new James Bond and you log into Netflix oh man it's wild yeah. So we'll see um, who ends up buying it and uh, where things go from here. I always like listening back to old podcasts about stories and then coming back a few years later and seeing like what became of the oh, stories yeah, we talked like about. Oh, yeah, like shit we were talking about as soon as it kind of became breaking news. <laughs> and our opinions of it and, and how that's changed. And yeah. Th- this is one I'll be curious to see where um, where it goes, who buys it, and, and what becomes of it. Huh. So that's really about it as far as... As far as that goes, um, is there a supply of pet pills included in the sale? <laughs> what does that mean? Got to got to keep all those young actors and actresses uh, doped oh, up. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of Xanax and <laughs> is, the, is the MGM pharmacy included as part of that deal? <laughs> Do we get to uh, partake in the buying of Judy Garland's coked out corpse? Oh, hey. That'd be a nice piece in my collection. <laughs> oh, look, Judy's rotten tooth. <laughs> uh, they did Judy. her dirty. Judy. Judy. 
All right. You want to talk about some criterions, or you want to move past that? Um, uh, you know, there's the, one big one. The one there. time I said to not do that, I got in trouble. So <laughs> that's true. Let's do it. Well, we. Uh, one thing that has not slowed down is physical releases. There's been some some good releases coming out all year. Um, so of course, Criterion is going to keep doing their thing, and they announce their March titles. A um, couple ones in here. I would uh, I would probably pick out, um, but the first one, Celine and Julie go boating. Not quite sure about that artwork. It's uh, interesting to say the least. Uh, but it was directed by Jacques Rivette. And it is an enchanting film of the French New Wave in which Julie, a daydreaming librarian, meets Celine. Ooh, Celine. An enigmatic magician. Together they become the heroines of a time warping adventure involving a haunted house, psychotropic candy, and a murder mystery melodrama. Hmm. Interesting. You know, one thing that I've slowly but surely learned about Criterion is don't trust the cover because it's not going to be anything like that. That's that's very true. Some of the covers are not really appropriate, I don't think. Yeah, like <clears throat> the color post or a color um, artwork for a film that's in black and white. Yeah. Stuff like that. Um, that comes out March 16th. Defending Your Life, Albert Brooks. Big time director, I guess. But uh, I prefer Mel. I, yeah, I think I agree. <laughs> I don't know. He's he's an acquired taste at times. But Young Frankenstein and uh, Robin Hood Men in Tights, that's, those are good ones. After he dies suddenly, the hapless advertising executive Daniel Miller finds himself in Judgment City, a gleaming way station where the newly deceased must prove they lived a life of sufficient courage to advance in their journey through the universe. As a self-doubting, Daniel struggles to make his case. A budding relationship with the un- unhin... Sounded out. Uninhibited Julia, Meryl Streep, offers him a chance to finally feel alive. Ugh, Meryl okay. Streep. You like her? No. Really? <laughs> I mean, I know I know what she, uh, how accomplished she is, but she's all right. I like her in The Deer Hunter. That's about it. Yeah, I just... She gets talked about as like the greatest of all time. I don't see it, don't, but what do people I know? don't shut up about her. But she is really good. I, she, I was watching. I started a movie the other day with her in it, and there's like a scene at the beginning where she's at a funeral with her daughter, and there was just like a, a whole difference between the way she was acting <laughs> and the way the other people were acting. Like she was very subtle in her performance, <laughs> and everybody else is like really trying to to fake cry and stuff and it just you could just see the difference between like an average actor and, yeah. and I mean there's a reason her. she's as popular as she is you know yeah 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh well, that's that yeah we're all you can have your opinion we're all allowed to have opinions <laughs> uh secrets and lies mike lee um when hortense a black optometrist who was adopted as a child begins the search for her birth mother. She doesn't expect that it will lead her to Cynthia, a desperately lonely white factory worker whose tentative embrace of her long lost daughter sends shockwaves through the rest of her already fragile family. Huh? I like, I like Mike Lee. I don't know if I've seen any of his stuff. Uh, I don't think you have. I don't think so either. Um, Tuki Buki. <laughs> what? Tuki Buki. I think it's a African film. Senegal, yeah, so Africa. In this picaresque fa- fantasy drama, the disaffected young lovers, Anta and Mori, fed up with the car, long to escape the glamour and comforts they imagine France has to offer, but their plan is confounded by obstacles both practical and mystical. Probably uh, not check that one out. <laughs> I'll pass on that one. This one I am excited about, The World of Wong Kar Wai. This is like one of the releases people have talked about for probably years at this oh, point. Oh, it's that big box set? Yeah, yeah, the big box set. Uh, it comes with As Tears Go By, Days of Being Wild, Chunking Express, which is big because that was an out of print uh, singular release, Fallen Angels, Happy Together, In the Mood for Love, and 2046. Huh. So I wonder how much that one's going to be. I, I picked that one up. 100 bucks with the sale, uh, probably. Yeah, that's that's not bad. Yeah, so those are the the March releases. Oh my god, that comment section of 
the blu-ray.com post is just toxic oh, like straight up cancer that's the worst website ever <laughs> A lot of a lot of faceless losers just a, leaving dumb opinions. A lot of uh, Roger Ebert wannabes. No, oh, that's that's for sure. Have you? Did you ever crack into that Irishman Criterion? I watched all the supplements. I didn't watch the movie yet. Yeah, there's some good good special features on there. There is. I I really like the behind the scenes. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's just like kind of all engrossing about everything. I, I wish it was longer though. Yeah, I revisited that masterpiece the other day, and then I watched that. Um, making of right afterwards yeah it could have been like another hour honestly yeah yeah it's what a freaking film oh man Uh. Ooh. well on to the meat and potatoes well as we said at the jump (laughs) what nobody cares cares about this well i care but we're doing it anyways if people listen they must care all right so like like we said at the jump it's been a strange year you know, a lot of releases didn't come out. So we were not really able to formulate real top 10 um, of 2020 films. So what we decided to do was we're just going to talk about some of the films we watched throughout 2020, not uh, any year they came out, and just kind of discuss the ones that we really enjoyed that we watched this year. I've watched a um, total of 10 films from 2020. Let me see what I watched. Um, we also, both of us, subscribe to the pro version of Letterbox, so we have stats we're going to go through, which I love this little... It is I pretty cool. That, I love the little pro thing. How many films did you watch in 2020? How many did you watch? <laughs> <laughs> not as many as you, but... Definitely not. I watch... Okay, I, I, I have 501 diary entries. Okay. What about you? I have 329 diary entries. Christ. 27 movies on average per month, 6 on average per week, which I'm okay with that. That's not bad. No. Mine, mine's a lot. <laughs> 41.8 average per month, 9.6 per week. <laughs> Fucking geek. And yet, I still feel like I haven't scratched the surface of what's out there. Well, you never will. I mean... I mean, it's ridiculous. You know, we're, we're not around long enough to even come close to that, you know? I can't... Where do you find what you watched just in 2019 or 2020? Well, I don't know. If you go to the year in review and then you click on diary entries, it shows you just 2020. Um, first film I watched on January 1st, 2020 was Paul Thomas Anderson's Hard Eight. Okay. Which did I you liked. Like that one? I did like that, yeah. Um, still kind of slowly getting through his filmography. And the last film on December 31st, the other night, Richard Linklater's The Newton Boys. How was that? <laughs> very average, very forgettable. It was yeah. fine. It was fine. That was a bad movie. Well, the first film that I watched of 2020 was Private Life. I prefer <sighs> Private Parts. I'm sure you do. I'm sure you prefer. I'm sure you prefer boy private parts too. Howard but this Stern's is... private parts. <laughs> oh, is that that uh, Paul Giamatti film? Yeah, Paul Giamatti, Catherine Hahn. They're like struggling to have a kid. It's really solid. Like I enjoyed it. It's just it's depressing, and it's definitely not for my age group or our age group. I was looking up a list just like the other day of best things that are currently on Netflix, and that was on all the lists. Yeah, it's definitely a older people film. Maybe like 40-year-old sort of film. Uh, trying to have and the, kids. They look like they're 50. <laughs> they they are. At least he is. Well, he is, yeah. He's definitely an old man. He was born in 67. Yeah, sure. 54, 54 53. 54, yeah. uh, and the last film I watched, ugh, The Pale Door. This is a perfect example of a film that... <laughs> It, don't trust the poster because the poster for this is awesome. The movie like immediately sucked ass. There's just all this brother talk. Like they say, little brother more than John Lanting in <laughs> in uh, Sunrise. <laughs> I mean, it, the that, bigger that's not a knock on John. By no, way. That's, it's not. That's a it's, knock it's on the not. screenwriting process. <laughs> it's it's not a knock on John at all. Um, but like at the beginning, they say brother like fourteen times. Like, hey, big brother. Hey, little brother. And he puts a 
he puts a bandana around his face, like this will give you brother magic. <laughs> it sounds cool though. Like it do- it sounds cool. It's like what is it, like a western with witches. Yeah, it's like a culty witch western. You know, but... though, like I'm at the point, and I know it's like you shouldn't listen to everyone else, and you should develop your own opinion. But like when I look up a movie like that, and I see that it's like overwhelmingly negative reviews. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes now, like I won't even waste my time. You know. I agree. Because it's like, fuck, I'd rather put that hour and a half towards something of higher quality, you know? Yeah, it shouldn't do that, but I... Yeah. My go-to is to go to Letterboxd and see what it is. Right. I mean, like, back in the day before that existed, you wouldn't know, and you'd have to watch it yourself. And I mean, that's that's how it should be, but there's so many films I want to watch, and it's like, why do I want to burn two hours on something that, like, everyone's ripping apart that's probably going to suck, you know? Right, exactly. And I, I kept seeing it popping up on the the deal spot of uh, blu-ray.com but i was like okay it's coming to shutter at the beginning or the end of the year (laughs) i'm gonna wait and check it out and i'm glad i did because oh my god i'll never watch this crap again (laughs) happy you can say uh, you could say you've seen it though i can yeah move on with my life um who are some of your stars of the year (laughs) oh you want to go there you can tell i went through a harry potter Marathon because my uh, my top ones are Robbie Coltrane, Emma Watson, oh yeah, w- Warwick Davis. I have a that's definitely yeah that's all HP right there. I have a let's see, number one star with ten films, Ben Affleck. Wow, what yeah. Did you watch? I don't know. Uh, well, that's cool. Then you can click and see what you've watched. I mean, all the Kevin Smith shit. I went through oh, all that yeah. at the beginning okay. of the year. I like seeing I like seeing the connection. Yeah, of... in the town. So I watched all that. So Ben Affleck, Jason Mewes. <laughs> oh my god. Kevin Smith. <laughs> but number four is Robert De Niro. Yeah, the only person on my list that is not involved with Harry Potter is Robert De Niro. <laughs> and then at number five is Brian O'Halloran. So it's a very Kevin Smith. You can always tell. That's that's the funny thing. Um, <laughs> Nothing about... like Bob De Niro uh, sandwiched in between Kevin Smith and Brian O'Halloran. <laughs> I also have Daniel you know... Stern on my top ten. Wow. Yeah. Well, how many of his? Uh, six. Oh, wow. Yeah. I can't think of six. <laughs> um, uh, both Home, Home Alone, Alone Hannah and her sisters. Oh, I forgot about that. James versus his future self, which is a good little okay. indie film I'd recommend. Uh, Little Monsters, and the Woody Allen film, um, Stardust Memories. Hmm. I haven't heard of that one. Not my favorite. What about your directors? Well, who do you think's number one, after what I just told you? Kevin Smith, probably. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) Kevin Smith, Richard Linklater, John Carpenter, Martin Scorsese, and Chris Columbus in my top five. How about you? Sounds about right. Mine is Martin Scorsese, Takashi Mike, John Cassavetes, Kevin Smith, and Linky, um, along with Park Chan Wook. God, you're so sophisticated. <laughs> I have to say, as much as I love Link later, his little picture and that director thing, very punchable. Very punchable. Very <laughs> just like smug. Like, I make the best films. <laughs> I know about time. <laughs> uh, Shut up, loser. Oh man, that's funny. Um, <laughs> what about your highs and lows? What was your highest average watched film? Oh, where do I see that at? It's down a little further. Okay. Highs. Oh, highs and lows. Highest average. Parasite. Me too. Which I don't agree with. Um, I think, think it's a good film, but I'm shocked by that. It I, is, I don't know what clicked with that one I as mean, opposed to other like South Korean or foreign films. It's literally the highest scored film on Letterboxd. I think it's. I think it came at the right time where, like. <sighs> Non blockbuster like foreign yeah. indie stuff became popular, so yeah. I think it just it hit it at the right time, yeah, especially I mean, with letterbox people. I like the movie a lot. Um, my lowest average is Halloween <laughs> Resurrection at a one point seven. Holy shit! <laughs> and my most my... popular is Parasite, and my most obscure is some Tom Petty concert film. I figured because my most obscure is a Fall Out Boy concert film. Yeah, and I'm actually the only person that's logged this Tom Petty. <laughs> Wow. 
Tom Petty classic performances. Lame claim to fame. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> my uh, and then my lowest average one is uh, Attack on Titan Two: End of the World. <laughs> <laughs> Great show, horrible movies. It's just like one of those unfilmable sort of things. You can't yeah. really make something out of that. A lot of things don't translate, you know. Yeah, transition. Transition. Well, that's that's cool. Five hundred and one yeah. films. That's not even close to my biggest year. No, I think my my biggest year would have had to have been like twenty fourteen. You know, when we had just started out, and mm-hmm. or twenty fifteen maybe. What was what do you think yours was? Um. Okay, it would have had to have been twenty fifteen because twenty fourteen I just started. So twenty fifteen I watched. Actually, I don't know. Only two fifty five. Oh wow. My biggest 2015 oh. is like when I started, and 20, I started. 2016 was my biggest. 420. 2016 was my biggest. Mine was 666. Ooh, a bad omen. I know. Let's see. Why is that the case? Oh, I went through a Bond kick. I watched all the Bond movies. I tried doing that. I watched all, a bunch of Anton movies because that's when he died. Um, I watched like seven. Kubrick films, so well, that was the first year I really started using Letterbox. So I was just like, fight, I'm gonna watch everything. Yeah, hey, and if any guys out there listening, you know, your movie watchers you should definitely check out Letterbox, it's a great tool. Oh, great tool, and a lot of tools on it. Yeah, just stay away from the comments, but for your own personal, <laughs> um, you know, like diary keeping of the films mm-hmm. you watch, it's the fucking best. I love it, I click on it every day of my life. Uh, yeah, same. And even the stats, like you pay a little bit, but I, I think it's worth it if you like film enough to keep track of what you're watching right. and what you're rating and all that. It's, I, I love it. It's it's a great purchase. I I, it was worth it. 548.8 hours on movies this year. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Get Guess. Well, let's see. You've got like 150 more than me, so you've got to be pushing 900. Yeah, nine thirty-seven. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh man. I, Twenty-three reviews, four likes. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I guess I have to be more obnoxious. Maybe that's what'll do it. I mean, I'm not much better. I've got like, fuck. Let's see. My most liked review is nine. My most liked review is is seven, and it's the Before Sunrise one, where it's like, pee, pee, poo, poo, I am so deep, yada, 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 fuck off. A real review of Before Sunrise on this stupid app. Pathetic. (laughs) And based on uh, your 937 hours, you've spent 39 days watching Hey, well, there's a 365 in the air, so that's not too bad. That's not too bad. You're still giving yourself (laughs) some time. To jack off, play video (laughs) games. Jack off, Inter- play Zeno Blade. Inter- interact with people. <laughs> go oh, to work. Your interaction with people, that's got to be about one hour. Uh, let me check my <laughs> loner box review. <laughs> Lonerbox.com. Uh, two hours, and they're all spent looking for Blu-rays with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. Oh, well, we can go through some of uh, some of our favorites that um, that we watched throughout the year. Uh, I have quite a few, but I can just kind of bum rush through them. Sure. Um, uh, you want to go ahead or you want me to? Well, I mean, I'm going to start off with a big one that I watched. Just, okay. I mean, like a couple weeks ago for the first time. Um, finally, at age 30, got to watch <laughs> The Godfather Part 2. Oh, my God. Hey, I'm not going to say finally. I'm just going to say finally. <laughs> well, better late than never, right? I mean, um, yeah. At least you're not somebody who post some dumb uh, review about it yeah i mean i had seen the first one a couple times really loved that for some reason i just never you know i never got around to watching the the sequels and i was um back home like a month ago and i grabbed some of my blu-rays and brought them with me back to arizona made sure i grabbed the godfather set so i could finally watch part two and holy fuck man which um which do you prefer i don't know the more i think about it i might prefer part two but like those those first two movies, I haven't watched part three yet, but those first two are just amazing. And not one point in that three and a half hours was I bored or anything, you know? Yeah, I think two is the better all around film, but I yeah. think one is more entertaining. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, and that the last shot of the first Godfather movie when they're kind of <sighs> initiating Michael and they shut the door, you know, that's that's and about then, as good as the shit gets, you know? 
Kay kind of realizes like what she's part of. Yeah. Now. Yeah. I mean, that was, you know, like I had seen the Godfather years ago and I just watched it again this year and it really mm-hmm. kind of clicked with me this time. So, um, I wanted to watch the sequel, but there's, there's some scenes in particular in part two that have just, I haven't stopped thinking about, you know, that, that scene when Michael is kind of disowning Fredo and they're in that, mm-hmm. you know, the snows falling behind them and the big windows and holy shit. I mean, that's some of the best shit I've ever seen. I mean, who has a better career than, than, um, John Cazale? He was in five movies, Seriously. all of them nominated for best picture. I mean, the conversation, Godfather one and two, yeah. Dog Day Afternoon, and then uh, Deer Hunter. I did mean, you ever, what, did you ever see that um, documentary about him? I did. Yeah, it's it's pretty good. Um, those Talking Heads documentaries are yeah. not always my favorite, but yeah, he's a uh, he had a good career. That he really is taken a, too soon. What a list of movies right there! Insane too that he he was with Meryl Streep at the time. Fuck, <laughs> and she was. She's quite attractive back then. Oh, Meryl Streep was a good-looking gal. Yeah. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I loved The Godfather Part Two. I mean, just, I, I have not stopped thinking about it. It's almost something that, like, I could put in right now and watch again, even though it was mm-hmm. just, like, a week ago, you know? Like, I could watch right. it again for sure. Now you have to watch Part Three, which... <sighs> I know. Maybe today. Which people talk shit about. Like, it's, in comparison, it, it does not compare. Right. But it's not, it's not the downright piece of shit that people say it is yeah and i haven't seen it yet i know that new cut just came out that's kind of gotten some good reviews the he he recut it again but i haven't seen it i can't comment but to me it almost seems like maybe by that point too much time had passed you know godfather part two was 74 and then you know it wasn't until 1990 where you get a part three yeah so and he's all gray and old and yeah what's he been up to for 16 years how's he still alive right right but i know it's it's a very interesting letterbox graph for that film because i mean there's quite a few five stars but a lot of shit in the middle too Mm -hmm. yeah uh well parasite came out uh last well like 2019 so i got on a a tiny bit of a bong joon ho kick uh some of the things i hadn't seen from him yet okay uh, and earlier in the year, I checked out a couple of his. Uh, first one was Mother. That one was from 2009. Not to be confused with the Aronofsky film. Oh, which... the Jennifer Lawrence classic. Mm, yeah, the biblical classic. Anyone notice how J-Law hasn't been in a film since Weinstein's been locked up? <laughs> you do the math. That's the, that is the fucking truth, too, man. And I mean, talks it's... about that, but I noticed that right off the bat. And she has fucking fallen off, man. She was definitely fucking Well, her. and she was, was fucking her. she was always always praising him yeah always oh harvey gave me my career like, i mean figure it out literally where the fuck what happened to her she has like been she's anything. i don't think she's horrible but she's not like they were acting like she was the second coming of meryl streep or something right i mean she's fine she's just hot to me i don't care about her acting to be honest mm-hmm. i saw those <laughs> pics of her <laughs> Yeah, I mean it's it's very interesting timing. Very very interesting. Yeah. Anyway, sorry um, to cut you off. Go go ahead. No, that's that's okay. Uh, I, uh, but I checked out Mother, and it <laughs> it's uh, the plot. It follows a mother um, who, after her intellectually disabled son is accused of murder, she attempts to find. Oops, she attempts to find the true killer <laughs> in order to get her son free. And I, I don't know. There's just something different about something different about foreign films they're just those films that are not afraid to go there they yeah I, I feel like american films are limited just because of i don't know studio interference or stuff right. but there's a lot of darkness to these movies and this is one that does it well it also kind of uh intertwines it with some humor every once in a while sure, but sure. it just has like a an eerie tone the whole way and, you know, really I've, good i've liked everything i've seen from that guy even though i don't think parasite's the greatest film ever i mean i've, I've enjoyed what i've watched from him Right, yeah. Uh, but the other one I checked out was Memories of Murder. Um, that's a good one. Yeah, which people talk about. I think that's, other than Parasite now, I think that's the one people talk about as his like yeah. masterpiece. People yeah. love that one. That one was from 2003, and it was based on some Korea's first serial murders. Yeah, it's Korea's Zodiac. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and that one was really good. That one also um, just got a re-release last year as well. It was in theaters, so yeah. I, I would not be surprised to see it come to Criterion. Oh, that's a perfect candidate for that. It doesn't have a Blu-ray release in America. But so. you know, with that movie, I felt the same way I felt with Zodiac. Like, I saw it once, 
Uh-huh. I don't really care to like. I have no need to watch that again. They're not those right. type of movies for me. Like, right. Great watch, but that's probably one and done. Yeah, uh, I love Zodiac. I think it's just well crafted, so I could I, I could watch that one. This right. one, I didn't love as much as the other stuff I've watched, but I, I feel like if I uh, if I watched it again, I'd maybe get it more. Sure. Um. What uh? What else? What well, else you got? I've got another one that has really stuck with me since I watched it a few months back. Um, it was a Criterion release this year. Come and oh. see from nineteen eighty five. Oh. Come in me. Uh, I mean, I had heard hype about this film, right? And it was one of those where I thought, okay, everyone's saying it's good. I'm sure it's going to be good, but you know, it's going to take a lot to really blow me away. Mm-hmm. And I watched this film, and I mean, it it is a masterpiece. It blew <laughs> me away for sure. It's something else. Like it's different from any war film I've ever seen. Yeah, there. I mean, it's just shot beautifully, and that ending. My God. I mean, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it. It's, it's a brutal film. Um, it's rough. It's yeah, it's rough, and that's what I'd always heard, and it is. But just th- this kid, his acting is off the fucking chain, man. And yeah. He, he looks like a innocent youth at the beginning, and then by the <laughs> time the movie ends, he looks like he's fucking aged about forty years. It's like those pictures they take of, like, a president before they go in office and then after. Like, they're completely different people. Oh, I mean, man, it was just, I don't know, really powerful, awesome movie. Loved it. That's another one I could watch again, but it just, it takes a lot out of you for sure. It's exhausting. It is, but holy fuck, man. What a film. What a film. If you like the war type of stuff, I mean, this is, kind of takes it to another level, you know? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, A couple more I checked out. I was on a real South Korean kick at the beginning of the year. Um, but a couple that I checked out, one was a hard day from 2014 and then the handmaiden from 2016. Okay. Okay. Uh, a hard day. I, I picked that one up the library. Um, the library I have around here is just ridiculous as far as like criterions, foreign stuff, things you've never heard of. Yeah. That's pretty cool, man. You get all that shit over there. Yeah, it's good. Um, but it's about a homicide detective that accidentally kills a man with his car, and then he tries to hide the body in his mother's coffin on the day of her funeral. Shit. It's like, uh, it's thrilling, and it's obviously some dark humor. Okay, uh, okay. But it's pretty good. And then The Handmaiden, that one was also really good. Um, with the help of an orphaned pickpocket, a Korean con man devises an elaborate plot to seduce and bilk a Japanese woman out of her inheritance. Um yeah, it's like an erotic thriller, okay. psychological thriller, um, with some very explicit lesbian sex scenes in the same vein as Blue is the Warmest Color. Wow, are they hot? They are. Okay, because that's... <laughs> oh, you mean the chicks? Yeah. Uh, they are. Like, okay. in real life, in the movie, they're like all done up and homely. Okay. Um, See, my... It, it's know. cool. At least with blues is the warmest color. I mean, they're both hot chicks in real life, but yeah. at least one of them in the film is hot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, I was like the same when I was watching Blues the Warmest Color. I was like, oh, this is this is going on for a while. Oh, her face is in her legs. Okay, cool. Oh, let me whip it out. <laughs> a little scissor action. Oh, uh, yeah, scissor me timbers. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, I think that does it for the Koreans on this list. The Korean films, okay. some good stuff. I'm uh, going through looking at some of the things I, uh, a lot of my favorite things that I saw last year were shit that I was just late to the party. I mean, Mm -hmm. let's see, August 9th, 2020, um, you let me borrow this and I watched it for the first time, Braveheart. Oh, fuck. I mean, people are probably thinking, wow, this guy's got a movie podcast. He's talking about fucking Braveheart for the first time. <laughs> you but, can't watch everything when you're stuck on Kevin Smith. You, you just, I mean, look, I got to watch American Pie over and over again. How can I fit in Braveheart? <laughs> but uh, Mel Gibson, 95, it's just a movie that I've always heard how great it is. Something about the time period, I guess, was just a little off-putting to me. I never really felt like... Probably. You know, I just never felt like the, the need to to watch it but uh, you let me borrow the 4k and sat down one morning with a cup of joe and holy fuck yeah i know people kind of rip it apart for not being accurate i, I don't care about that it's it's purely entertaining yeah i mean i just want a good movie you know the, yeah the people that uh study jimmy hoffa and shit say that <sighs> frank sheeran's account of uh the irishman and all that is bullshit but the movie's amazing you know 
Right. So that's all I'm looking for. And this movie was fantastic. Um, the score, what can we say? Oh, I mean, it's one of the best. Yeah. James Horner. I mean, 1995 was James Horner's year for James scores. James Horner gets me horny. <laughs> he really does. Oh, he does. And it was just, it was amazing. I want to buy that uh, 4K. I actually um, sold the Blu-ray that I still had in the shrink wrap. I sold it the other day, so I'm going to have to buy oh, the nice. 4K. Cool. Great yeah, movie. Great movie. I one love my Mel. Favorites. Yeah. That was one. I I saw it for the first time maybe like four years ago. I've watched like five times since. Ugh. It's just kind of crept up into my list of favorites. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> a couple more here. Well, not all together, but uh, a movie that came out in 2019 that I had not seen when I made my top 10 list, um, but it was Honey Boy. <laughs> I don't know. I, we probably discussed this a little bit, but... Um, That's okay. I could talk about this movie again. Yeah, it was directed by Alma Horrell, uh, which was her first film ever, and then it was obviously written by Shia LaBeouf about his life growing up, which yeah. um, I don't know how accurate it is, but I... If I, mean, uh, I would if have his, think that's pretty, pretty accurate, yeah. Yeah, if, if his adult behavior is any example, yeah, he probably had a <laughs> fucked up childhood. I mean, look, Shia is kind of notorious for being a piece of shit. He might be. I don't know the guy. I love him as an actor, though. I, I will always enjoy his work. Right. I think he's a great actor. He gets engrossed yeah. in his roles. And, and I mean, also, you got to hand it to Lucas Hedges for and Noah yes. Jupe. Yeah. Noah Jupe for playing younger versions of him. They're... They're uh, Noah Jupe. That kid is really good. Uh, he was in Quiet Place. I think he's he's probably gonna go places. Yeah, he's. Uh, I've enjoyed him for sure. It, it's just an interesting concept too to like write mm-hmm. a movie about your dad and then you play your dad. You know, it's just it's very strange. It's a really like, vulnerable position to put yourself in. Yeah, because like you're literally letting yourself into criticism of your life. Right. That just kind of reminded me of. You know that that dirty genre, I guess. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it's gotta have like yeah. a Florida Project, American, American Honey, Honey sort of feel. Yeah, but I I I like the way they. I guess they were subtle about what it was about. Like they're not like, oh, he's he's filming even Stevens right now. You can right. just tell if you're familiar. Yeah. Oh, he's on the set of Transformers. Yeah, like, I agree with that. They didn't. It, it was very subtle in that regard for sure. Uh, yeah. And then another one that also came out last year I really enjoyed. It was called Waves. Um, I wanted to see this. Yeah. Written, directed, produced by Trey Edward Schultz, which I know you don't like um, It Comes at Night, but he also did oh. another one. Oh, what Comes at Night? Been waiting on that answer for three years now. Well, have you noticed and what's you're still going struggling. on? This? Have you noticed what's going on this year? It's. Uh, fucking virus uh, do you need do you need to be explained any anymore what kind of virus is triggered by the time of day makes no sense what doesn't it only come at night you missed the whole thing what comes not a really pay attention what comes at night that's right it. shut up it shut up you don't know shit <laughs> the people come at night who gives a fuck? <laughs> but anyway, this one, yeah, this one was really good. It's like, I, it's like a, I guess you could call it an epic because it's kind of longer. Yeah. Um, but you're just kind of with this family the whole time. It's got, once again, it's got Lucas Hedges in it, but it also has uh, Alexa Demi, who's in mid '90s. The fuck shit fucks like shit. Ah. Oh. Uh, but it's, it's the vibrant landscape of South Florida it traces the emotional journey of a suburban family as they navigate love, forgiveness, and coming together in the aftermath of the loss. Um, some dark themes, some shitty stuff going on. Um, wow. I also saw that somebody said it was like a portrait of toxic masculinity. <laughs> I'm out. Which I can see, but that's not that's not what it is. It's just men are guy. scary. <laughs> it's just a guy who's like losing control over his life and okay starts to lash out. It's good though. I'll let you borrow it if you want. Hey, yeah, I'm interested. Bring it in. Yeah, Nick's uh, Film Emporium. Yeah, renting Rental out service. for a dollar ninety nine a day. <laughs> well, I'm not paying that, but uh, <laughs> I'll take them for free. <laughs> okay. I got to talk about one June. I watched it in June of 2020. Um, loved this film. I, I'm pretty sure you've told me about it in the past, and I just I never watched it. I've heard it from a couple people 
Alexander Payne's Sideways from oh, 2004. Yes. Holy shit. We're going back to Paul Giamatti here. Man. Like, who would have thought that a film about a road trip movie about wine would be so oh my God. so good? <laughs> that fucking movie is amazing, man. There's just like it's, it's an easy watch, um, but you really enjoy the characters. Like Paul Giamatti is kind of a pretentious douchebag, yeah. but the way he plays him is really good. And Thomas Hayden Church, oh is, man, I mean he's obviously a douchebag too. But yeah, he there's like. I don't know, vulnerability to both of them that is really... Yeah, I mean, just the way, just seeing what these guys get into. I mean, if you haven't seen it, two middle-aged men embark on a spiritual journey through Californian wine country. One is an unpublished novelist suffering from depression, and the other is only days away from walking down the aisle. So you kind of got like, I don't know, two guys that are different points of of life, you know? Yeah. Paul Giamatti, I, I think he divorced his wife in the film, right? Or I think like, or she, she died left or him or she left him. Yeah. So, I mean, he's like a downer the whole time. The other guy's about to get married. And I mean, it's just fucking great, man. And they, yeah. He and then meet these chicks and yeah, he wants like one last thrill. Yeah. Before... <laughs> I don't, it's just like, I fucking love that movie, man. Yeah. I just like Alexander Payne does well with like the road trip movies. He did that one. And then Nebraska, which I also really enjoy. Ah, good um, music in Nebraska. Ooh. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, sideways. I that was one of those that I I always remember seeing the uh, the cover at Blockbuster, like Hollywood Video, and just obviously never thought twice about it. But it was just one of those posters that was ingrained in my mind. Oh yeah. And, and I mean, if you if you don't know what it is, yeah, you think, oh god, well, two guys going to drink wine, wow, neat. But sideways, what's that about? Oh shit, it's so good. Yeah, so so good. Um, another one I checked out for the first time. P- checked out a couple uh, Peter Bogdanovich films. Who? Uh, Peter Bogdanovich. <laughs> first one was uh, 1973's Paper Moon. Another oh. road a road film, uh, black and white, but it has uh, Ryan and Tatum O'Neill. Oh. Yeah, daughter, father uh, duo. Okay. Oh but God. They're... Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> but they they're traveling across the country trying to sell Bibles. He's like a con man, and it's it it's maybe one of the best like child performances I've seen. I'm not gonna say of all time because I haven't seen everything. Please Some don't say take of all note time. Of that. Yes. But it's it's one of my favorite child performances. She's really good, and she also won an Academy Award for it. That's impressive. And then she went on to deal with uh, clinical depression and almost killed herself. Did she? Oh yeah, I don't yeah, know much she, about her. She was in Bad News Bears, though. I like that movie. Oh yeah, she was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She dealt with a lot of stuff. Huh. And they have like a really rocky relationship. Like he's always been a dick, and really, yeah. They were on. If you're well, you better respect done. your dad because he's fucking Barry Lyndon. So <laughs> you better respect your dad. He's a, a socialite trying to climb his way up that, uh, the right. social structure. That's right. No different than real life, I guess. Oh, gosh, she looked like a little boy with that Oscar. <laughs> yeah, she had that that uh, bowl cut thing going on. Damn. Yeah, she's, she's good in that I one. never knew anything about their um, broken relationship, though. Oh, yeah. I know Have she was heard... married to uh, John McEnroe. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't help. Yeah, he's a, that guy's unhinged. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, uh, have you ever heard of the show Sunday Morning? No. It's just like this show on uh, on PBS where they just they just chronicle like art, film, music, uh, different things. Oh. Uh, it's it's really interesting and insightful. It's, is it on my... Sunday morning? It is, yeah, wow. every Sunday morning. But there's always like different. Um, they always do like a profile of somebody, some person, and they did one on on her one day, and she just talked about their their uh, relationship and how he's. Sucked pretty much. Uh, I never knew any of that. There's yeah. something kind of calming about those uh, weekend like PBS programs. Oh, it's. I mean, it's just a delight. Yeah. My parents watched it a lot as we were growing up, yeah. and I've kind of, I've kind of, um, I, was I watch say, it now. It, it reminds me of like something you know my my folks would be watching when I was younger. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got a catchy tune to begin it, and like even the stuff I'm not interested by, they I just I watch because it's. They just make it interesting. Yeah, they do a it's, good job. Good programming. Yeah, it's a good show. Um, but yeah. the other Peter Bogdanovich film I watched... Sorry, did I interrupt No, you? no, I think you were going to say... Uh, I think I know what you're going to say. 
Yes, 1971's The Last Picture Show. Sybil Shepard. Sybil Shepard. Jeff, um, Jeff Bridges, Alan Bernstein, Ben Johnson, Cloris Leachman. Never and, seen it. It's on my watch list, though. So. Oh, it's 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 great. Uh, it was part of that um, BBC story criterion set I got. Oh, that's right. Yeah, and it's yeah, it's just it's just really good. It's another of those like in the life of things. It, it spans many years, but it's about two high school seniors and their longtime friends um, just growing up in like this really shitty podunk um, town where they have a, a movie theater. And it's um, yeah. I've always been intrigued by that one. Yeah, another black and white one. That's that's really good. It's I'll, sad and I'll stick to Clerks. Ugh, there's more. There's more than one black and white. <laughs> the film. best black and white film ever made. Oh my god. <laughs> but um, yeah, really good. Uh, and then I saw that there's a there's some na- nakey scenes in it. Oh. Uh, and it says in 1973, largely because of the skinny dipping party scene, the film was banned in Phoenix, Arizona, when the city attorney notified a drive-in theater manager that the film violated a state obscenity <sighs> statute. Strange. Like, talk about like a 1970s Karen. Yeah. I like, mean, go- seriously, someone was like, bored. <laughs> city attorney, don't you have like some crimes to try and figure oh, out? Or joke. Fucking loser. <laughs> One more shitty thing about Phoenix. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> well, um, I'm going back here to January now, last year. I've mentioned Damn. trying to... It feels like an eternity trying away. To catch up. Well, this is what's disturbing, because I feel like I watched this movie maybe four months ago, not a year ago. Um, trying to catch up with some of the Paul Thomas Anderson stuff. I watched oh, Boogie shit. Nights, 1997. Ooh. Yeah. Fucking A, man. Great, I, great porno. Film. Oh yeah, uh, I liked that one the first time. Really liked it the second time. Yeah, something about Heather Graham, man. She's always got me going. Yeah, I know what it is. <laughs> Those tits. <laughs> what? Well, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> she is a one hot broad. I um, think that's easily Mark Wahlberg's best film, best performance at least. You must not have seen Shooter. No, haven't. Don't want to. Oh, you know what? I correct myself. Ted is his best film. <laughs> you must not have seen The Italian Job. <laughs> you must not have seen Four Brothers. <laughs> nope, I sold that with the shrink wrap still on it. Oh, God. I mean, that's like, that's a movie. It's another one of those like Facebook movies that you just see people yes. talk about. Oh, this is such a great film. Yeah, not to sound like we're like film experts, but I know exactly what you're talking about. It's like these, uh-huh. you know... Um, <laughs> <laughs> How do I say this without sounding like um, a scum? They're just misinformed. Yeah, it's just like these, you know... F- Idiots. Age 15 <laughs> to 25. Um, to 45. <laughs> morons, I guess. that <laughs> Moron? That think like um, Wahlberg is um, James God's Stewart. And, yeah. yeah. And, oh, like, great. I, I like that you're uh, using his name now. You know, and that like... Um, <laughs> The guys from Outcast are great actors. Andre, oh. whatever his name is, is in that movie. Tarkovsky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. You see those fucking posts all the time. Yeah, that's one of them for sure. Oh, my. Th- this scene makes me cry. <laughs> you know what else Shut is a pet up. peeve of mine on there? Like when people share like a fake poster for a sequel. Oh. I think it's real. <laughs> Hocus Pocus 2. Oh, I fucking hate that, dude. Yeah, it's tr- annoying. I, I really hate it. <laughs> Just like research for two seconds. Oh man. <sighs> well, there were a couple films that I. That, are you done talking about that one? Yeah, it was a good movie. Okay. <laughs> there were. A... <laughs> I liked it a lot. There were uh, a couple films that came out this year that I slapped a five the first time I watched it. Um, two v- very different movies. Um, the first one was Yee Yee, which was a Taiwanese drama from Edward Yang. You are so sophisticated. No, not even. I, if I wanted to draw attention to myself, I'd write some review about it. <laughs> I love Japanese or whatever fucking country it is. Taiwanese. Taiwanese. You racist. <laughs> oh, shit. <coughs> Sorry, I'm getting choked up. A little, a little, my mouth's a little dry. Mm, but yeah, it's a... Huh? Yeah, mm, Keurig. Keurig coffee. 
make another cup when we're done. Same. Got to figure out what I'm going to watch for the day. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> the wall. <laughs> Not the Pink Floyd film. That means your, actual, your oh, actual wall. Talk about somebody that thinks they're sophisticated. You watch the wall and then you're like, you're ready to break down authoritarianism. I never, fucking, I never said anything about revolting against society. I'm just... <laughs> This is sending me the way those fucking kids are walking to the meat grinder. It's funny as hell. Oh my god, that was funny. Oh, Don't he watches the kitchen. <laughs> oh, it's more like running in one of those, and then they walk out. Uh, that that really is a good movie, though. Like it's fucking crazy shit. It's, Where'd you watch it? Uh, I actually watched it on Facebook. Somebody had uploaded the full thing, and I watched oh, it on wow. my computer. Yeah. Cool. It's yeah. um, it's pretty good though. It's it's like a live. It, it matches up with the the album, so every song plays during a different part. It's pretty dope. So, is it a concert film or is it like a? Oh movie? no, it's a movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's a movie. It's, cool. It's pretty good. Yeah, I'll have to check that. Tr- out. Troubled rock star descends into madness in the midst of his physical and social is- social isolation. Oh, Ian Curtis. Yeah. <laughs> How's oh, it hanging? Nick, Nick Beisel. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go back to uh, you, Yo-Yo. Yee. Yee. <laughs> Yo-Yo Ma. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just everything clicked with this one. It's just uh, another of those films where you just you kind of get a glimpse into a, a family's life and you just watch the struggles they deal with. Um, but it deals with three generations cool. of a family. Um I know and then, shit like like I know a movie like that is probably great. I just have to bring myself to watch it, you know. Yeah, and I'm I'm trying to use my Criterion channel a little more, and I mean they have so much shit on there, and I just never realize it. Do you have to and watch this, those on your computer? No, I can. It's on the stick, okay. But it doesn't work well, so I'll just use. I'll put it on my iPad and then. Uh, Okay. Cast it, cast it to See, the TV. Man, I wish that if they would come out with like a PlayStation app for that, I would probably subscribe. Oh God. Yeah, I, they have it on like everything else yeah. except Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah, that bums me out. Yeah, hopefully one day. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but that one was really good. And then the other one was a Witness for the Prosecution from 1957. That was Billy Wilder, um, and it has Tyrone Power, Marlene oh, Dietrich. Sounds like a courtroom. It is, yeah. Oh, you, pro- you probably you probably wouldn't like it, but just the just the way that it all plays out uh, and the the ending, it's fucking awesome. Um, and even at the time, uh, the management of the theater. So this is what they they announced, like as a voiceover after the credits. The management of this theater suggests that for the greater entertainment of your friends who have not yet seen the picture, you will not divulge to anyone the secrets of the ending. For oh, of the I know, I've heard about that. Yeah, like. The ending just kind of keeps going. Like yeah. you, you think, "Oh wow, what a twist!" And then the twists keep coming. Yeah, I've 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 heard of that movie. Isn't that the guy? Who, he's wearing like a powdered wig. Yeah, Charles Lawton. <laughs> yeah, that's all I remember. Well, from it. It, yeah, it's like it's like a British um, British court. So yeah, they have the wigs and all that silly stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Cool, cool, man. Really good. I forget where I watched that one. I think it might have been on the channel. Something unsettling about no, that, no, no, no. that heavy guy in a powdered wig. <laughs> well, that's the guy that directed Night of the Hunter. Night of the Hunter. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Night of the Hunter and Robert Mitchum, I, I did check out Cape Fear, the Scorsese one. Yeah, I saw didn't that. Love it. I think you felt the same way I felt about it. Yeah, I mean, I... De Niro's man. great. It's just like so... Oh, he's awesome. Ridiculous, I think. It is, yeah. It feels, I don't know, something about it feels off. Yeah. I just I just didn't care for it that much. It's a little cheesy, but, I mean, I, it was fine. I wasn't bored with it. It was just not, I don't know, something was off. You're right. Yeah, but I, I like how they got Robert Mitchum and then Gregory Peck even oh, yeah. like for two minutes. Yeah, that's right. A little cameo. That, that was the best part of it. That wasn't on my list, but I just wanted to bring that up. Well, I was trying to think of like 2020 movies that... <clears throat> I could talk about, but there was there was one in particular, and it would be my number one based on what I've seen. Um, mm-hmm. Directed by Alan Ball, it's actually available oh, on wow. Amazon Prime. It's yeah. a Prime film. It's called Uncle Frank. Yeah, really good movie, man. Um, if Uncle Frank likes to blow, <laughs> then it must be really bad. <laughs> it is this um, homosexual man named Frank. Ah, oh, is he an uncle? He's an uncle to Sof- well, <laughs> Sophia Lillis. <laughs> Once you said Alan Ball, we knew what it was. Yeah, Alan Ball is a gay man, so most of his content 
all of his content has LGBTQ themes. Yeah, and that's you know that's that's what he wants to write about. That's it, great, but, which is fine because most of the shit that I've seen from him is good. But um, yeah, it's him except Six Feet Under. No, that's a masterpiece. You I'd, dope. I'd rather I'd rather watch the Vampire Diaries. Oh God, <laughs> I can't believe he wrote that. I can. <laughs> <laughs> is it gay? <laughs> uh, I I don't know. I haven't seen it, but I'm sure there's some homoerotic content going on there. Mm. But um, well, vampires are. Anyways, um, Uncle Frank, it's him and Sophia Lillis, and they're like on this road trip. They're going back to um, Frank's home because his dad died. So they're going back to the Ooh. funeral, and it's just honestly like, like <laughs> if you're a gay person, you probably love this movie. I'm not uh-huh. gay, and I love the film, but it really, um, it, it's a, it's about a lot of those things, like not being accepted back in that time. I mean, this is okay in the '70s, and um, Uncle Frank is really struggling with, I guess, being himself, and he's got like mm-hmm. this long term partner that, like, really wants to go to the funeral with him and meet the family, and he's just like super hesitant yeah. about it because you know his dad is giving him so much shit and. It's about that because he, you know, his dad hated him, and then he's going back to his funeral, and it's just really, it's, it's, yeah, it's a good movie. Really recommend yeah. it. Yeah, it asks questions of like, well, there's a lot of movies where parents treat you like shit, and yet you still come back. Yeah, and... I mean that's the thing. There's like these flashbacks um, to him being a kid and his dad just like, you know, really fucking uh, you fag and all sorts of stuff. It's you know, yeah. But I don't know who, who the guy that played Uncle Frank, Paul. Paul Bettany. Paul Bettany. Um, See, I I like when these actors break out of the Marvel thing and yeah, go to act. And I mean, th- he fucking does a kick-ass job in this movie, man. Really, really good. Who's his dad? Uh, it's the guy from uh, Dodgeball. <laughs> Rip Torn? No, uh, Stephen Root. <laughs> really? Yeah. I like him because yeah, he's, he's just like a character. He's always different. Yeah, I mean, he's not in it very much. I mean, he dies pretty quick, but you just see these flashbacks of him, and he's just a... You know, douchebag. Maybe that's what I'll watch today, Dodgeball. Uh, <laughs> he's fucking good in that movie, but um, I actually really like that Sophia Lillis trick, too. I think she could probably end up being a, a pretty good actress. Yeah, I mean, she was good in the It movies. Yeah. She was probably the the best of them. Yeah, I mean, she's she does a really, really good job in this movie. I, I would recommend it, definitely. Okay, cool. Yeah, I always see that pop up when I jump on... Uh... I jump on Prime. Yeah, I mean, I was I love Six Feet Under so much that anything Alan Ball does, I will check out. And yeah, you know, I mean, like, fuck, he wrote American Beauty and shit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I also checked out a couple 2020 films that would probably make my list if I had made one. Uh, the first one we kind of mentioned it, but Soul, yeah, uh, another Pixar film directed by Pete Docter. Uh, yeah, Pete Pete Docter, as far as as far as Pixar movies go, he he definitely seems like he's the most um, he's the one that asks a lot of questions sure. about like existence and time again and right. all those things. He he asks a lot of mature questions for like Pixar movies, um, but it just follows a, a middle school uh, music teacher who seeks to reunite his soul and his body after they are accidentally separated. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just something really clicked with this. I think I'm more of a fan of jazz, and I thought i ever was Wait, so he, di- he dies in this movie he dies yeah i didn't know it was about that. <laughs> yeah he fucking dies and goes to the afterlife i thought it was just like about a guy playing soul music no that's part of it like he's about to get his big break as a jazz music musician and then he falls down a sewer and fucking dies Fuck. so this is like uh you know pixar give him credit for that they hit the big topics for kids and everyone really but yeah it's, like, it's um, like a reincarnation sort of movie then <clears throat> Yeah, it's like the origins of human personalities. It kind of talks about where people get their personalities when they, uh, before they're born, and then it also talks about determinism, hmm. which, yeah, some some deep shit for a for a Pixar movie. The music is also great. There's like these these void songs. Really? Uh, you might know what I'm talking about, where like you're in a void and it's just it's um. Womp, 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 womp. Well, like that kind of music and like it's Enter Trent the Void <laughs> yeah it's like Tre- it's Trent Reznor oh and fuck Atticus you Ross. did the music for that yeah and okay. Atticus Ross <clears throat> the music is is awesome I guess I better boot up Disney Plus then yeah I'd, I'd be curious what you think I, I definitely think it's a, a pretty mature um, 
Pixar film. Yeah, like I Disney just, in general. I've kind of I don't know. I've strayed away from some of that stuff recently. You know, I haven't. Right. Like, I, I don't even know what Pixar's been doing recently, but I haven't seen a lot of it. Um, Inside Out or any of that stuff. Oh, he did that one too, and that one asks the same sort of questions. Yeah. But I think this one's a little bit deeper, and <clears throat> and um, I just think it kind of does it better. Okay. Even though I do really like that one. Um, but yeah, it was just cool to see something original, not a sequel, as far as Pixar goes. Yeah, that's it's cool. There, anytime they come out with something new like that, it usually does a good job. I mean, it's there's a reason they have that reputation, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but the other 2021 was Jim Cummings' new film, Ah, Wolf of Snow Hollow, which is uh, excuse me, <clears throat> completely different from Thunder Road. Which I mean, I love Thunder Road. I've, Are you ready I've, to assume he will be one of the greatest filmmakers of all time? <laughs> I'm not. I think he'll be great, but uh, okay. But I, I don't know about that. And even so, I, I don't think a lot of people really care for his writing style and the way he does, like his humor. Yeah, and... I love Thunder Road, man. That movie is not what I thought it was going to be. No, I'm it's like, not. Holy but... shit, this is fucked up. <clears throat> oh yeah, like <laughs> when he slaps. Oh yeah, mom. yeah. Like that was kind of shocking to me. It was. It was something I'd never seen in a movie before, so I was kind of taken aback at first. And yeah. then I've watched it several times since and really love it. But this one is completely different. It's like a horror comedy about a, well, a wolf, oh. quote unquote, because um, there's some there's some things going on. There's a, not everything is exactly what it seems, but I think he does well with like putting in the jokes in between like the tension and the horror and it was uh, Robert Forster's last film wow yeah um, I'm more of an Alan Cumming guy but maybe I'll check it out <laughs> I just like the guys that coming <laughs> <laughs> I just like guys named coming and also the guy who does the voice of Winnie the Pooh his name's Jim Cummings too wow yeah but yeah I think he balances the horror and the comedy really well in it there's some pretty funny moments and I, I think he's just kind of charismatic the characters he plays well that guy's one for one for me so i'll definitely check that out yeah two for two for me that's it's hard to do there's like two people that make that list it's uh him and robert eggers yes uh definitely not harry astor harry astor <laughs> i don't know if i have much to talk about i don't want to talk about bill and ted um first cow bored me to tears oh my god me too it was well shot i, I liked it after like the first hour it was dark like not content wise but the way it was shot i couldn't see shit yeah i'm not a big fan of kelly reichert i've watched a lot of her stuff already most of her stuff already and i'm not a fan her shit like sounds like it would be good but then it's like ugh, slog it's like way fucking slower than you expect it to be i mean first cow was fine i I didn't hate it i thought it was solid but it was just like i I was again yeah, I was way more intrigued when they started making those cakes. That was oh yeah, that but, I agree. That was the best part. It's like okay, finally something's happening. But like, I got a two-hour movie about guys stealing milk from a cow. Fuck me. Yeah, I think I rented that one too. Which you know, I, I think it was like it was a buck. Bucks, yeah, so. it was cheap. I did too. It was on that. Yeah, um, whatever Black Friday sale or Cyber Monday or whatever. oh yeah, maybe that was at two bucks. Yeah. I mean, I'll pay two bucks to, to check out something. I didn't hate it. Like. I gave it a three. I still like it in a yeah. way, but it just was not. I'm just not really a big fan of hers. Old Joy was that was bad. See, and then, and that, that movie seems like it would be great, you know. I know, but she. It's like they're like half-assed ideas. Yeah, yeah. And then certain women was probably the best one, and that's just a bunch of vignettes yeah. of different stories. But <sighs> I don't have much else. The news of the world was pretty good. Tom <laughs> Hanks. Uh, let's say check that out. It's like kind of a Red Dead Redemption sort of feel. Um, yeah, I have a, uh, I have some more, but I, I can just end on this one yeah. here. We can talk about this one. Um, this is not technically one that I watched for the first time this year, uh, but I did rewatch it and was kind of blown away. I loved it. It's from 2009, um, directed by Mark Webb, 500 Days of Summer. Dude, I could talk this, about that. I rewatched that one this year too. I, I should rewatch it right now, honestly. You sh- yeah, they probably hit I, even I, differently. I could watch it now. Um, it just—I don't know what it was the first time I watched it, but people just talk about it like it's just great rom com. And when I hear rom com, I don't immediately jump to it. Uh, but I did own it, 
And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll check it out again, see what see what it's about. And I was just kind of floored the second time I watched it. It's so different than any sort of rom com. It's, it's a little surreal at times. Yeah, and there's some deep stuff going on in that movie. There, there is some deep stuff. Um, not only does it tell you that um, they break up at the end, they they manage to still make it interesting. Yeah, uh, I really. I don't know if I'm biased, but I really love the scene where they go to see the graduate. Oh, and that's she, great. And she like she has her realization yeah. at the same time that that um she does in the graduate. Uh-huh. And you've got the <clears throat> Simon and Garfunkel uh bookends theme pa- playing in the background. Shit. While they're at the uh <laughs> the uh record store. Yeah. It's like, oh, you want to get some dinner? I think I'm going to call it a night uh, that's it you, you know it's i know it's i i don't know that movie really hits hard and i love the scene when they're in the elevator too and he's listening to the smiths and she starts singing oh. along and she's like, i love the smiths so fucking oh good my God. it's yeah i could i could see why um they let him jump straight from this to like a big budget oh, yeah. superhero film yeah um even like the you make a madri like that right. whole dance number yeah it's silly in context, but it's just, I no, don't know. And I mean, I was, they have all those shots in that movie where it's like what he envisions oh, things God, should be yes. like in his head. And then yeah. you see reality and it's just, uh, it's so true if you've ever, <laughs> if you've ever been associated <laughs> with anyone, you know, I mean, I just, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty realistic portrayal of like a relationship. It is. And that scene at the end when they kind of reconnect and they're on that oh, park bench, that is dude. so fucking good, man. <laughs> oh my God. She's like, oh, you know, one day I woke up and I knew, and he's like, knew what? She goes, what I was never sure about with you. It's like, fuck oh me, Oh my dude. God. I just got chills from you saying uh, it's, that. Uh, I, when I watched that, like a couple months ago, I watched that part like five times. I had to go back and watch it because it's such a good scene. And I just, I love how you think she's the villain the whole time, but you realize that, you yeah. know, a lot of it is him. Well, right. Like and I mean, she established from the beginning, really, that, you know, she wasn't cut out for that. Well, yeah. And she, like, she told you. Yeah. She but, she let you know ahead. Oh, that's a good film. You don't, <sighs> you're not a big fan of hers, are you? I don't love her. Um, like, do you think she's, like, she's charming? I think she can be charming. I oh, think she's extremely charming. I would this. let her ruin my life, no doubt about it. <laughs> she's got. I say it now, but it's probably not true. She's just very plain to me, I guess. Yeah, but I, that's what I like about it. Okay. She's got yeah, that. I, th- I think she's she can be really charming, like yeah. in this, and then I think she's charming in Elf too. Um, <laughs> she's the best part of that piece of shit. But. There's something about of, her because, like, all you know, most like big time actresses, you know, they're like they just seem so unobtainable and like fantasy, mm-hmm. really. But something mm-hmm. about her seems like she's someone you could just meet, you know. That's a good point. Or like she's somebody that she reminds you of somebody that you might just run into. She doesn't That's seem a good like point. some unobtainable. <laughs> not that I have a shot with Zoe, but you know what I mean. <laughs> right. No, I know what you're talking about. She just she gives off hipster girl vibes, which I, I don't like always it. love. I like it with her. Like a Zoe Kazan sort of thing. Oh, pff. she's way better. <laughs> well, she is. I, I agree. I don't like her cheeks. <sighs> really chubby. <laughs> yeah, something about she's got like a chipmunk face. <laughs> she she's also very plain, in my opinion. But that's that's the, the hipster girl look. Yes, very plain. Anyway, we just uh, deconstructed Zoe more than we just constructed the film. <laughs> That's okay. That's it's a great film though. I, uh, I yeah. actually grabbed that Blu-ray too when I was back home a couple weeks ago. Yeah, really emotionally engaging. It was one of those films in my collection that kind of sat there for a long time, and I thought about getting rid of. But I'm I'm really glad that I checked it out and know that you know it's awesome. Did Mark Webb ever jump back into things after that Spider-Man? Debacle? Yeah, he did that. He did the gifted movie with Chris Evans. Yeah, and I've never seen that. But <laughs> and then he uh, floated off into obscurity. Oh, he's doing a live action Snow White. <sighs> yeah, didn't they try that with did Kristen that? Stewart? Oh, that piece of shit. You're right. Yeah, they were like action versions, but <clears throat> God. it's fucked up. Though, oh, he that did guy the... could have been like a great kind of like indie sort of filmmaker, and then he got sucked in the big budget shit and got ripped apart. You know. Wow, he absolutely loves Simon and Garfunkel. He did the movie The Only Living Boy in New York ah. with uh, Kate, Kate Beckinsale and Callum Turner. Oh, Kate and Pierce. Damn. And, and Wallace Shawn. What is this, like a sensual erotica film with Damn. Kate Beckinsale? 
with Kate Beckinsale and um, Wallace. Pierce Brosnan. Who? Uh, Wallace Shawn. <laughs> really? Yeah. I don't see his name on here. Oh, he's on there. I guess he's smaller part. Well. Hmm. Well, I do have others, but, you know, we can... I think we've done a good job. Of, no, yeah, it's about of, two hours long. So, kind of tracing what we've watched over the over the past year, and you know, hopefully, hopefully this year goes better as far as like newer films coming out in a more accessible way. Right. It's you know, I don't see how it could be any worse. It's got to go up, you know. Yeah. Well, I can't wait for uh, the Green Knight to come out. God, that's another one. Like, fuck, I forgot about that. Yeah, that one's supposed to come out. I think in June or something. Shit. Yeah. That I don't know good. why they didn't put that one out on home release that, that i mean i would have paid for that one yeah that seems one that would be like the perfect candidate for that you know yeah well well let's hope 2021 is a better year oh man well let us know what are some uh some of your favorite movies you got to watch in 2020 um shoot us some ideas that you'd like to hear on the show i think we're, we're open to that you know let's keep oh, the, of course we're keep the show going i'm telling you this time we're getting back on with it it's just you're not going to hear from us four months from now. It's going to be two weeks. So yeah. to you loyal listeners, thanks for sticking with us. Um, hey, drop a review for the podcast on iTunes if you like the show. That would mean a lot. It really helps us out. Um, Check us out on Letterboxd where you can um, yeah. see our ratings for these films. <laughs> Seth and Talks Film on Letterboxd and Filmy's Nick. Filmy's Nick. Give us a follow. Anything else, buddy? That's it. Thank you guys for listening. And your patience. Thank you for your patience you over your patience. these past the past year where we have not been consistent. No. Well, Matt fucked our podcast up. He left. So <laughs> it's all Matt's fault. <laughs> Anyways, um, <laughs> that's episode 151. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for listening. And as always, go fuck yourselves. <laughs>